Good morning, ladies. How are you? It is Thursday. I hope you're having a good week. And today is Relationship Day. So we're going to be talk about, uh, talking about relationships. I did get actually a couple DMs, which is super fun. I love when you send me messages because then we can talk about them. So I'm just going to wait for a few people to come on. Oh, we already have people on. And I'm actually going to answer the question, one question right now. And so let me just pull it up. How are you ladies doing? Okay, let's go, questions. Okay, so one question I got, welcome, good morning, is I'm having a hard time understanding the balance between not letting others impact how you feel versus speaking up about your truth. And this is often confusion to a lot of people because there's this underlying belief, oh, I need to plug my computer in. Give me two, one millisecond. <laughs> you guys can think about the answer to that before I give it to you. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so there's an underlying belief that if we're paying attention to how we feel, we won't be able to almost stand up for ourselves and give ourselves boundaries. So what we put up with from other people changes. And it's not necessarily true. So the answer to this question is very simple. Good morning. Thanks, Melissa, for, for saying hello and uh, getting in the chat. I'm glad it is working today. So soup, this is a super easy answer. Oh, what was the question? So the question is, um, I am having a hard time understanding the difference between not letting others impact how you feel versus speaking up about your triggers. And the answer is very simple. Not letting others impact how you feel is the ideal. People are going to still impact how you feel and that's okay. The key to speaking about your triggers is feeling good when you speak about them and having language around speaking about them. So if you are, let's say you, someone has triggered you and you have let them impact how you feel, when you speak about your triggers, when you're upset, it's not about them. So think about in that moment, creating some language. And we talked about this a little bit last week, creating, creating some language about, hey, I'm being triggered. Everyone has different triggers and this totally isn't about you. And maybe there are ways that we can be better and improve our relationship moving forward. But let's wait to talk about that when I'm not triggered. So your trigger and your emotion is all you. Once you feel good, and when you're in a place where you have not allowed the experience to change how you feel, you're able to come to the discussion and to the communication in a very different way. So instead of saying, I hate when you do this, you never clean up the garbage and I'm just so miserable in this relationship because you've been triggered. If you haven't been triggered, you might say in a little bit more of a calmer loving voice and tone. Hey, you know, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed today. Do you think there's a way that you'd be able to help me out? Or is there something that we can do today to, to make that easier on us? And you can actually have a discussion about it. But this question also, what I'm going to talk about today are two of my favorite relationship books, Gary Zukov, Spiritual Partnerships, and The Mastery of Love. And this question actually goes, ties really well into Gary Zukov's book of spiritual partnerships. So I'm going to go into this book first um, because it will tie really well to that question. I do have some comments in here. Let me know, ladies, if I answered that question well and if you understand my answer. Because number one, to summarize, there are going to be times when you are triggered and you don't know how to communicate properly. So coming up with words, like I said last week of, 
I'm feeling triggered. I just need to, I'm going to look into this a little bit more, see where this is coming from, see what's coming up for me. And then speaking from a place of feeling good. When we feel good, we have a very different conversation. It's not about them. It's about how we can be better together moving forward. Okay. Um, I think you answered the question. It just takes a lot of self-control, 100% not to react in the moment. So one thing that I want to reiterate again, and this came up in a couple of questions that Paige had asked last week as well, is when we're used to doing things a certain way, you have gone over and over this program in your mind. Your body is used to, it's auto-programmed at this point. It's used to reacting. So be gentle with yourself, be gentle with the people around you. Having a good conversation once isn't going to change your behaviors and isn't going to change the behaviors of those around you. So if you picture you as a moving train, you have a lot of momentum. You are just full steam ahead. And that's what you've been doing for years. So as you try to change the reactions and change the patterns and and step into a different version of yourself, you have to slow down that train and then turn it around. It takes a while to turn the train in the other direction. So just be patient with yourself. Um, living with people who trigger you, even if they don't mean to, yes, that's just their, <laughs> that's just their personality. Okay, so I want to talk to that. So it's just their personality. You're still the one being triggered. So in this comment, and I know this is just text, look a little bit deeper into it's just their personality. See if you can love them for who they are. Write them a love letter and a rampage of love and appreciation. When you're in your best self, I guarantee you, you see the good in everyone. What you're seeing is also a reflection of what you're seeing in you. It's not just the other person being annoying because it's really easy. So it's easy for us to say the other people are so annoying. Their personalities are so hard to deal with. You're still the one being triggered. This starts with you first and see how you can love and appreciate these people and look at them, the truth of your being. The love, whether you believe in God, source, universe, whatever that is, the truth of your being recognizes we are all one and loves everybody for the journey that they're in. Your triggers are based on your conditioning and your current belief system and training. So let's start to train out of that and know, okay, am I living in, when we see someone's personality, it's easy for us to just say, oh, look, it's their personality without us being affected. So when we're being triggered, I want you to look and ask yourself, is this my pain talking or is this my truth talking? What does my truth actually believe about this situation? That this person's just trying the best that they can. They know they're, they're trying to implement what they know, all that they know. And I'm just going to love them and shed and, and spray love all over them and really taking ownership of the reaction. Does this make sense, ladies? It directly affects your happy bubble. Well, so this is a very common. So just to reiterate, other people affecting your happy bubble. Yes, it is a little bit more challenging, but it's all you, right? So how can you, once you start really taking ownership of your own energy, things will start to shift around you. And I know it can be difficult, maybe pulling yourself out of the situation or communicating in a different way. Those people that are um, challenging you are just encouraging you to keep growing, to keep strengthening your foundation of joy and remember that if other people are able to really easily change your inner state, was that inner state really there to begin with, I question. So this is just continuing for us to, to master our inner state of peace and not letting our external environment change that. And I know it's not easy. 
I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. In these discussions, I hope that we just talk about things in a little bit of a different way so that we can take that ownership. Okay, thanks. I hope that's helping you. One more question. What if you feel like someone else is always triggered, which triggers you? So again, when it's triggering you, this is a very similar conversation. If it's triggering you, how can you communicate to that person from a place of love and truth and understanding? Like, hey, I see you're a little upset. Is there anything I can do to help you? Stop it before it gets too far. I think a lot of times we, in the beginning, and this goes to both questions, we might be in a great place, we see people are triggered, and we don't necessarily speak our truth from a place of love. We pay attention, okay, ladies who ask these questions, because these are all very similar. Pay attention when you're sitting there and you're thinking you're in your vibe and someone's going off in your household and or someone you know, and you're think of pay attention to what you're thinking. Are you thinking, oh shit, this is here it goes. Oh, they're gonna take my, you know, they're gonna take my peace away from me. This actually happened this week. Something, a couple of a few things happened to me, like back to back, you know, when it's like the the waterfall effect. And I could feel that my patients weren't as high. And I was, if anything else had happened, I felt like it was going to shift my mood. And I did have to say casually like, hey, I'm not feeling as strong this morning and I'm feeling a little bit more sensitive. Do you mind if we have this conversation a little bit later? I'm just going to need some me time. And I literally just went and meditated. So we're not always perfect, but see if there's some language. So number one, when you're feeling good and something else is happening around you, pay attention to your thoughts and what's happening in your mind. If you start thinking like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can stay strong. We have to rewire that programming first. I know often it's easy to jump to the other person and be like, hey, can you calm down? You're ruining my space. <laughs> But if they're triggering you, this is a time for you to look at your internal dialogue and what programs have been going on in your mind. Is this making sense? So pay attention to that. Ladies who answered the question, does that give you any additional tools to look at when you're feeling triggered by others? Let me know. Um, keep asking questions. I'm really loving this dialogue about relationships. And as you keep asking questions, I just want to quickly summarize this book, um, Spiritual Partnerships by Gary Zukov. And it's one of my favorite relationship books. This is actually a brand new copy because I buy extras as gifts <laughs> to give away. So this was in my gift closet. And Awesome. So Melissa says, yes, it all starts with you. Okay. So keep me updated and keep me posted because as we continue doing these trainings, if you're asking me specific questions, it'll really help us to workshop some things so that you can take specific tools away from the training to feel better in your life and create more peace and better relationships. So what Gary talks about is how we get to choose if we want to enter spiritual partnerships. And I'm not quoting him. This is just my comprehension of the book. And so spiritual partnerships are when we choose to take our relationships to a next, to a neck, to another level where we can continuously grow and evolve from one another and keep each other accountable in that growth. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Number one, I'm going to give you a friend example. Number two, a relationship example. We're so used to creating family, friends that do not trigger us. Triggers are good things because they help us to continue to step into the loving, accepting, amazing beings that we are. So the friend trigger, your friend breaks up with someone. So he's a guy. So he gives a male example. I'll just give um, a female example since we're women. And so your friend breaks up with her boyfriend or girlfriend and the normal friendship dynamic is, oh, don't worry. 
you know, he or she was such an idiot. You're so much better off now. And um, you're going to find someone before him and you were never happy anyway. So don't worry. And let's just go out to the bar, have a couple drinks, maybe get laid and have some fun and take your mind off it. So this is the average relationship or friendship conversation. What Gary is encouraging us to do and talk about is in those friendships, how beautiful would it be if instead of that dialogue, you said, you know what? I totally get that this is really hard. What did you learn from this relationship? And what did you continuously see coming up? What can you heal and how can you grow so that you don't take your triggers and your traumas from your past relationship onto your next relationship? How can I help you do that? And how can I help you talk through that so that you can continuously get closer and closer to your dream relationship? How beautiful is that? What do you ladies think? Would, would you be annoyed or happy if your friend talked to you in that manner? And again, it's the belief of growth. And he uses the word spiritual. It does not mean like religious or anything. It's a completely growth mentality from spiritual growth and personal growth. So let me know if you think that that conversation would go over well with you. The second example he gives is in a relationship. And he's with his wife and they're at a dance and there's a really attractive woman that walks in the in the door and the wife notices his energy shifts and so the wife just casually said oh you think she's beautiful don't you and he in that moment he knew that he could lie out of fear of how she would react and what that would be like to her or he could be honest and see how she reacted and see if they can grow together because her reaction is not about him. And so what she did, what he ended up doing is he decided to engage in a spiritual partnership. And he said, you know what I am? I think she's really beautiful. And she, in that moment, took the power to also step up in a spiritual partnership and not take him looking at another woman as a reflection of how he felt about her how he, um, how much he loved her, what he thought of her. It was not about her. And she ended up saying, you know what? She is really beautiful. Thank you for being honest. And that was it. Like, imagine, we have some comments in here saying, is that a trick question? No, it's not because it has nothing to do with us. We are so conditioned and programmed for our relationships, friendships, family, romantic relationships to look a certain way. So wouldn't it be beautiful if we didn't live in this should and this could and, you know, expectations of how people should be and really just take ownership of our actions. She didn't react. It was a completely harmless situation and it was beautiful. So let me know what you think about that. And when I read this book, I really look at how can I continue to step up in my friendships, my relationships to live in a spiritual partnership with myself and others. So if you like that book, you can go take a look. Um, the next book I want to quickly give a story from is The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz. And this leads in nicely because like I said, when I read spiritual partnerships, I think how can I step into a spiritual partnership with both myself and others? And one of my favorite lessons from a mastery, the mastery of love is you will never accept someone to treat you worse than you treat yourself. So if you are not getting the respect and relationship from people in your life, Use that as a, as a reflection of what am I thinking and how am I treating myself? Because if you don't treat yourself poorly, internally, critical, you know, um, judgmental, whatever that is, your relationship, the most important relationship you'll ever have is the relationship between you and you. 
And so if someone's treating you worse than you're treating yourself, you're going to say something right away. You're going to be like, actually, I don't talk to myself that way, or I don't accept that, um, that language from, again, you're not reacting. It's coming from a very calm and easy place because you're not used to that language because you don't put up with it in your temple. Okay. So I really want you to think about how are you talking to yourself? Chances are you are your own worst friend. So if somebody talked to you like you talk to yourself, would you kick them out of the house or not? So an example, when I um, was single and I was really trying to continue to connect, I'm always continuing to connect and grow my connection with self. And I still find this uh, exercise amusing because in the morning, my pattern is to be like, come on, Vanessa, you got to go. You have so many things to do right now. Oh my God, what are you going to do? Oh, wow. Look at all the things you have to do to be successful. Oh man, you have to do this. You have to do that. If you were sitting next to someone who said that to you in the morning, you can tell by my eyes, I would lose my shit and I'd be like, get out. You are so annoying. But we put up with it ourselves all the time. So I want you to be a lot less tolerant of how you speak to yourself. And once you start improving how you speak to yourself, everything else around you will change. And how people are treating you is a reflection and aha and sign that you got to look inside. If you were to write everything you said about yourself on your body, would you be proud? <laughs> and another thing to visualize is if you were driving in a car and you know those cars with the big megaphones at the top and you were to say out loud everything that you say internally to yourself would you be happy with the things that were being displayed and and shouted out on that megaphone and if your answer is no then we got to change that around and that's okay because this is an opportunity for us to improve the most important relationship, the one with you and you. And I want to give you a, an example. When I went to cognitive behavioral therapy and did some CBT training, it was really interesting because he, I naturally, I can be very critical and really hard on myself. I mean, it's a double-edged sword. I think it makes me very passionate. It's also very exhausting and creates anxiety and overwhelm. So that's something I'm always managing. And he asked me, on a scale of one to 10, so you can answer this question, one being not at all, 10 being 10, like 10 being really bad, what do you think you have an anger issue? And I was like, no, I don't think I have an anger issue. Now I laugh because I know the answer. Now, if you might be thinking the same thing, if you are self-critical, and if you talk to yourself badly, and if you are hard on yourself and, and really a tough cookie, there is no way that your anger is a one or a two or a three. Just because you do not project your anger on other people, you are projecting yourself and that anger in you. So if you are self-critical, you got to really pay attention. Do I have anger? Am I angry at myself? Do I show anger and frustration to myself? So going back to the questions that we were asked in the beginning with annoying people, let's start improving our relationship with self and watching all those relationships change. Because also you'll notice as you start to talk better to yourself, you'll start to talk better to other people which is really powerful because if we can stop the reaction within ourselves and start being more kind and gentle and reparent ourselves, we will be better parents. We will be better partners. I hope this is making sense. And so, yes, I love the mastery of love. He, you know, he gets real deep and, and kind of controversial when saying no one will treat you worse than you treat yourself. So really looking at that as a reflection in your life. I have a couple comments coming up. Um, 
Yeah. So in the morning, we had some laughs that yes, in the morning, they're trying to stop going there and making the long list. I get it. I totally get it. I was there and I still feel that little, the little gremlin rear her head in me and that's okay. It's now becoming friends with that person and that conditioning. I don't know that our conditioning ever changes. We just become more aware and we choose not to engage in the conditioning. So we might say to her like, oh, I see you're really excited to get up this morning, right? That's really cool. We're gonna take a little slow, how about that? So you are in control of that little gremlin. That gremlin's not in control of you. And this is an exercise of presence and awareness. Meditation really comes into play here and it's really beautiful. So a couple other comments. Um, I love the concept of thinking of someone else saying our internal dialogue, 100%. I always have the same issue as you. See, self-critical, I get it. That anger piece, you like that too. Yeah, the anger piece is great, right? So we think, no, we're not angry, but we are. We're so mean. We're really mean to ourselves. I would have kicked her out a long time ago. And so I'm going to finish up this, um, this training. I was going to get into some cognitive behavioral therapy, but I don't think we have time to go there. So next week we can talk more about cognitive behavioral therapy. And I also wanted to talk more about masculine feminine energy, which is super fun because we all have masculine and feminine within us and really playing with that balance is really fun. So I'm going to give you a little snippet though. Before next week, I want you to think about masculine feminine. What is, what do those words mean to you? When do you feel like you are in masculine feminine? What feels better for you? And just play around with what that means and, and how you feel on a daily basis. So I'm going to leave the masculine feminine piece at that. And I thank you ladies so much for being here today and for chatting about relationships. I know this is your favorite topic. And so tomorrow we are coming back with networking. And so tomorrow we had a request to talk specifically about partnerships and collaborations. So we're going to be talking all partnerships and collaborations. I hope today helped you and really reminded you that you know, it comes back to almost the same thing every week, but we talk about different issues and different tools is the most important relationship you're ever going to have is the one between you and you. And so have fun working on that relationship so that you can just better your connection and relationship with everybody around you. It just starts with you. And once you put in the work and the awareness and presence to start with you, everything around you will shift and give you the power to have the most amazing relationships that you ever could have dreamed. So sending you ladies so much love. Thank you for being here. This morning we had a few comments. Thanks, Janet, Paige, Kayla, Melissa. Thanks so much for engaging and asking questions and to the ladies who sent me questions as well in my DM. I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. for collabs and partnerships. Have a great Thursday. Bye.